everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with a Knit Picks double stranded sock blank, and we're going to use this to attempt to create some self striping yarn by hand painting a colorway on it. Now, the stripes won't be perfect because this is knit, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. For those of you that don't know, a sock blank is a pre-knit or crocheted piece of fabric that you dye with the intention to unravel it in the end to knit, crochet, or weave it into something else. These particular blanks are double-stranded, which means there are two strands of the Stroll Fingering Weight sock yarn knit together so that way when you unravel them, you'll get a matched set. So if you dye two blanks, it doesn't matter if there's tiny differences, each one will be its own unique pair, which honestly is a lot of fun. Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I knit and dye it all the time, and I'm really excited to play with it today. I have a shower curtain on my countertop, but I'm gonna add another layer of protection uh, today in the form of plastic wrap. This is something that I don't frequently use or show anymore, but when I'm doing a hand-painted colorway and I don't want the colors to bleed into the other sections, I do like to use some plastic wrap so that way I can roll up the blank or whatever it is we are doing uh, so that way uh, the colorway that we create stays relatively intact. I pre-soaked our blank in some water with a splash of vinegar. That way uh, there's acid already in the blank so that way when we mix the dyes and get ready to start actually dyeing the yarn, the dyes will be able to strike. Today we are going to be using food coloring, specifically the Wilton Colorite food coloring system. Um, and I'm going to be using the colors base crimson and base orange. Each of these are only one food coloring molecule, so I'm not expecting to see breaking today. The third color I want to use today is the natural white of the yarn itself. Let's do 10 drops, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of our crimson, and then 10 drops of our orange. And all of these colors are mixed in three quarters of a cup of water. Even though I am using food coloring today, the technique we're doing will translate really well with commercial acid dyes. And I am gonna go ahead and use my dedicated dye equipment for it. Now, if you wanna dye yarn with food coloring or acid dyes, you need to make sure that you pick the right yarn. For food coloring to strike, you need the food coloring, you need acid, you'll need heat, uh, but you also need a wool-based yarn. I suppose it doesn't have to be wool, but you need a protein-based yarn. So something like wool, alpaca, or silk will work with food coloring, but synthetics like acrylic and polyester or cellulose fibers like cotton and bamboo won't work with food coloring or acid dyes. I gently squeezed the water out of our pre-soaked blank. The more water you remove at this stage, the more liquid you can put back in to your colorway. Uh, we could be doing this with guar gum, but for today I just wanted to try doing straight food coloring and we'll see the spread and we'll see with probably a swatch at the end uh, what kind of colorway we're creating. As I spread this out, I would like to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out to Dorothy Young, Karen Siegel, and the rest of the Fiber patrons. I want to thank you all so, so much for your support of the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, if you would like to learn more about the Patreon and for early access to the Dipop PS series, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more, you can find more information about the Patreon in the video description and in the top right hand corner of your screen. Today I'm going to use these foam brushes to paint on our colorway, but you could use a squeeze bottle or some other kind of method as well. So I've zoomed in a bit. For a self-striping yarn, you want the row to be even, right? Today, I'm not going for perfection. So these will be stripes, but with a little bit of a variegated transition. Because uh, if you think of, just think about it, when I do a mark on here, this spread might go a little more into the row above, a little more into the row below. Um, so there might be some difference. But if we make our stripe 
wide enough. It doesn't have to be like mega wide, but if we make it wide enough, we should get a full set of striping. And if we go, if we add enough dye, there'll still be some modeled nature, but you will see we are going through the blank. While we'll probably see some tonal nature from the resist of the stitches themselves in this section, it's not going to be the same as if we just sprayed the stripe on. So let me see. With the spread, this is maybe one, two, three, four, five rounds on here. Uh, maybe I want to go a little bit bigger just to make sure we have more of a complete stripe. Now, again, if I were to add a thickener in here, something like guar gum, then these lines at the edge would be able to be much sharper. But part of the beauty of a sock blank is that we will see a bit of a variegated difference in it. And part of the fun is the fact that there isn't perfection, at least in my opinion. But I am leaving... I am going to leave some white stripes just for a bit more contrast, but obviously you don't have to do that. That's just what I am choosing to do. But I find that these foam brushes are good for applying the dye while still um, allowing you to not have too much liquid added. So I am doing my best to go straight across, but I'm not being obsessive or anything because I know I know that there will be some errors to this. I know that uh, there are going to be some places like I think up here is a bit thicker than down here and that's just a reality of the situation. When I zoom back out you can see that it's a little more crooked but again I am going to knit at least a little swatch it's not going to be a perfect example of how things would be represented across the whole thing, but it should give an example of what things look like, at least uh, from one of the two ends. Now I am going to speed things up and paint on the rest of the stripes. Uh, as you guys know, I really enjoy the slower method of painting on two blanks. In the March 2020 Chemnitz Dye Along livestream, I used actual paintbrushes and did some, both some abstract, but some, all, but some free form colorways uh, where I painted on cherry blossoms onto the blank. There's a lot you can do with these blanks. Uh, if you want to learn more about them, Knit Picks currently offers blanks in both Stroll and the Hawthorne Yarn Base. Both are double stranded. Uh, you can find an affiliate link in the video description to the Knit Picks website and also with some of my other favorite tools and equipment and dyes and things. The plan once we're done dyeing this yarn is to roll things up and then steam it in a steamer basket. But since it is food coloring, in theory, I would be totally comfortable microwaving this. Again, I'm using dedicated dye equipment today, so therefore I'm not going to be using my microwave. But if you are just dealing with food coloring, personally, I am comfortable playing with food coloring in cooking pots and pans in the kitchen. I especially love dying on with food coloring with my kids. And so that is just something else to consider. One of the downsides of dyeing yarn with food coloring is that food coloring is developed to add color to food, not textiles, and so therefore it hasn't been as optimized for light fastness and longevity as with some commercial dyes. So you might experience faster fading in direct sunlight with food coloring. In particular, I have seen fading when wet food coloring dyed yarns were left outside in the sun in a short time pan in a short time span. Uh, the fading was faster when the yarn was wet than when it was dry. But my favorite winter hat was dyed with food coloring probably about 10 years ago, and it's still really vibrant and I wear it all the time. So I haven't had a big issue with normal wear of items dyed with food coloring. Clearly my striping is not perfect. You can see <laughs> some of the unevenness in some of these stripes. Uh, I did have a little drip end up there. But part of the character with these double-stranded blanks is that these might not create the perfect pair of self-striped socks, 
but you will get a matched pair of self-striped socks uh, as long as you start at the same end. And I know you can't really see the ends right now, but both ends end on white, but one has the orange stripe first, one has the red stripe first, which will make it easier to make sure you're starting at the same point <laughs> on the colorway. Now I want to wrap this up. So one other thing I did right when I ended was I went through and I added a little more color to the center of each of the stripes to make that color a little bit bolder. Again, the food coloring in just the orange and in just the red aren't mixtures. The red is just red 40 and the orange, I never remember orange, yellow 5 and yellow 6, which one's yellow and which one's orange, but they're not mixtures, which is why we didn't see breaking. If we were doing this with, say, Whitman's Violet, we would see the purple with a little bit of a blue spread around it, and so that would be fun and pretty on its own. I have more overlap on this end, so I try to make sure to spread um, the edge over, and then we start rolling. Now, it's important to try not to squeeze the blank at this point. We don't want the colors to spread even more. They might spread more, but that's not our goal, at least. But you can see we got pretty good color penetration through the blank. Now, I am going to take our blank and gently place it in our steamer basket. Maybe I don't like that position. Maybe I'll do this position. Um, <laughs> and we'll go put it on the stove, cover it, and let it steam for 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, and now that our 30 minutes are up, I'm gonna take off the heat and remove our lid. You can see that we definitely still have white. I don't think the stripes spread very much. If you add a lot of liquid to what you're hand painting, then you might see more spread. We'll see what's happening towards the center um, once everything is cool and we are ready to go and wash this blank. We do have a lot of dye left over today, but don't worry. Um, actually, this could work. This might work for another project, maybe, that Lucas wanted me to do. But anyway, I won't leave any dye behind. With hand painting, I personally feel it's a little better to have a little too much dye on hand versus running out. Um, but if you pay attention to the proportions that you mixed, like I did at the beginning, then you can mix more up. Uh, to finish your project. But again, we had we started with probably a cup and a half of liquid total and Yes, we only painted on I guess half the blank because we left about half of it white But there's definitely enough dye here that if I just wanted to do orange red orange red stripes I think I would have had enough color mixed to do that Here is our striped colorway, and I don't see significantly bleeding down at the bottom so Right off the bat, I am feeling a little optimistic. I mean, this looks really cool. Again, the stripes are definitely not going to be perfect. Uh, but the high contrast between the red, orange, and white should make it easy to visualize those differences. So you definitely could knit a pair of socks and then dye and paint stripes onto it. That is absolutely an option as well. If you don't care about the rows being perfectly even, uh, this is a technique that would work. But it would be harder to get a matched pair of socks, and we can get that matched pair in here. I'm not seeing any bleeding at all. I'm gonna add uh, just some dish soap to here. Um, just rinse it out, and then I'll put the blanket in my spin dryer. And we'll come and take a closer look at it before I unravel it. Here is our self-striping blank. Unless I really had things shifted when I painted, we should have some amount of intact stripes, some variegated transition into the next stripe, and I think it'll be really cool. We got great color penetration to the wrong side of the fabric, um, in part because I went over it multiple times to really press and squish that color in with the foam brush. I think that if I had just been pouring, actually we still could have gotten some good penetration, but this looks pretty darn good. 
There's no reason why you couldn't try this technique on an actual sock that you had knit. You can knit up the sock and then paint on stripes after the fact. And with the foam brushes, because it removes a lot of liquid, the spread really wasn't so bad. These edges actually look pretty sharp. Now, if I had, say, the red mixed with gorgum and the orange knot, you would see a difference in the sharpness of those stripes. But for no gorgum, this worked pretty, pretty well. Anyway, now I'm going to go unravel it so we can see what our unraveled yarn looks like before I go and knit a little swatch. Just to show you what we're working with, here I am unraveling some of the second stripe and you can see there's a bit of red at the edges, but there were some complete red wraps in here and white wraps outside of our more variegated sections. I mean, so far you can see the striping pattern, right? Eek! How is this, friends, for a self-striping colorway? Now, as I wrap the yarn onto my PVC pipe Nitty Naughty, it's not perfect. This isn't the exact progression that the colors go, but it does show you that we do have sections of red, sections of orange, sections of white, and then variegated sections in between there as well. Today's swatch that I'm about to knit is not going to be a perfect representation of what this might look like if you were to knit socks because we're only going to be looking at a couple of stripes and since it isn't a repeat, since, it's, since each stripe is slightly unique, there can be some differences later on through this whole yarn. Nevertheless, I am really excited to see what this looks like uh, knit up on a little swatch. I knit the following swatch on US size 1 2.5 millimeter knitting needles. Uh, this swatch has 40 stitches knit back and forth in stockinette. And you can see that we have stripes here. There's a lot of plain white. There are some rounds of complete plain red surrounded by this variegated feel, which honestly sort of makes these stripes look like they fade and blend together. Uh, I did not go all the way to the orange, but I predict that things will be pretty similar all the way through the blank. I doubt I got any, quote, perfect stripes. Some might have more blending than others, depending on if they were more or less even, but that is part of the uniqueness of this yarn. The yarn itself is still pretty crimped from being unraveled from the double-stranded blanks. And so after I'm done filming this video, I am gonna go soak this yarn in some plain tap water and hang it to dry one more time so that way this crimp can relax. It really isn't a problem to knit from the crimped yarn, but it can be a little messier when it comes to say winding the cake or something. And so I find that relaxing this crimp uh, helps <laughs> with the management of the yarn down the road, but it's no problem to knit directly from the blank and I had no trouble at all knitting this swatch. The nice thing about the unevenness or irregularity of the way these stripes happen is that we do have a matched set here. So if we have a stripe that's a bit more even, it's going to be more even on both skeins, which means you can get a beautiful matched pair of socks. Uh, and I'm honestly now a little curious. So I went into this sort of haphazardly, not haphazardly, but I did I took care with the stripes I was drawing, but I didn't put in the effort to really line up the rows and to try to make sure I tried to keep my color uh, like in these rows to try to keep it as even as I possibly could. You know, does that make sense? And so it's possible that if you took a blank and you took a little more care with when you were blocking it and really paid attention to those rows, maybe you could create more regular stripes. And this is honestly something that I would like to try in the future. But I thought it would be fun to show what kind of thing we could get if we did these more haphazard, not, and haphazard is the wrong word, these more, I guess, lazy stripes. I mean, I don't think what I did was lazy, but you know, it was easygoing, just sort of free form stripes and seeing what it can transform into. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you enjoyed this video. And gosh, I, 
I don't know. I Something about looking at this yarn on the Nitty Nani and seeing those stripes there is so beautiful. Part of me, well, when I was knitting the swatch, I was wondering, gee, should I have made these stripes thinner, a little closer together? But there is a risk to that. W lazy, haphazard, freeform, whatever we want to call it, the thinner you make the stripes, the more or the less likely you are to get a section that is more solid. Because the likelihood that you have a gap in one complete back and forth round is just greater. So if I went thinner, then these stripes might have been less variegated or more micro striped, but it's all fun to play around with. And granted, 40 stitches, this is not the gauge or the number of stitches that I would use to make a pair of socks for myself, so the stripes will be thinner uh, if I were to go and turn this into an actual pair of socks, but it's just all things to keep in mind. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dipod PS. I want to give another huge, huge thank you to all of the Covenant's patrons for supporting the content that you see here on the channel. For context, I'm filming this video in April 2020. Uh, patrons do get early access to the Dye Pop PS series, and then these videos do become publicly available a month later. So this video will be publicly available to everyone in May 2020. I know that there is so much financial uncertainty for everyone right now, and so if you aren't able to help support the channel through the Patreon or through my Etsy shop, um, there are many other ways that you can support the content here uh, without contributing directly financially. And that is subscribing, liking, turn on notifications. When you engage with the content and watch and interact with these videos and share them with your friends, that is the biggest way to help this channel grow. So I would like to give a huge thank you to all of the viewers who are supporting this content I'm creating. It really inspires me and lights this fire inside me to keep playing with color and having so much fun. Today is a day of gloomy April showers, but I'm hoping and excited for May flowers to come and I hope to move the camera outside a bit and do some natural dyeing. I think a shift to some things with some longer time scales are going to be a lot easier for me to film while also uh, homeschooling my kindergartner and preschooler. Uh, but I am excited to see what a lot of these things that are about to bloom in my garden can do on yarn. As always, leave any suggestions and video requests in the comments below. I do keep track of everything, and although uh, some things are definitely going to be more limited for the time being, uh, I still have a lot of materials and there's a lot that I can create with what I have immediate access to in my home. Uh, I would like to send love and support to all of you and your families, wishing you all the best, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!